It has been narrated by Anas ibn al-Malik radiallahu an. He said when this verse was revealed, shaitan cried. This verse in Surah Al-Imran, where Allah says, and those who, when they commit an immorality or wrong themselves by transgression, remember Allah and seek forgiveness for their sins. And who can forgive sins except Allah? And who do not persist in what they have done while they know? They oppress themselves by sinning, their shortcomings. What's the first thing they do when they fall into immorality? They remember Allah. They remember the greatness of the one they're disobeying. And then the second thing they do, they seek forgiveness for their sins. And Allah says, and who can forgive their sins other than Allah? And then the third thing, and then they do not persist on doing what they're doing. Imam Ibn Kathir rahimahullah, says, It is mentioned by Anas ibn al-Malik radiallahu an. He said when this verse was revealed, shaitan cried. Why would this verse make him cry? It's because of the power and the meaning of this verse that he understood but many of us don't understand. Therefore, when the shaitan understood this, he realized there is no way for him to be successful in taking the believers who repent to Jahannam because of the greatness of Allah in their hearts. Because once they sin, they remember Allah and they seek forgiveness and stay away from the sin. And the following verse says, those their reward is forgiveness from their Lord and gardens beneath which rivers flow in paradise, wherein they will abide eternally. And excellent is the reward of the righteous workers. When shaitan heard these verses, he understood it would be a hard task to take the muttaqi to Jahannam. Another time he cried and gave a scream of defeat was at the birth of our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Jabir radiallahu an reported, I heard Allah's messenger peace be upon him as saying, The throat of Iblis is upon the ocean, and he sends detachments to different parts in order to put people to trial. And the most important figure in his eyes is one who is most notorious in sowing the seeds of dissension. One of them comes and says, I did so and so, and says you have done nothing. Then one amongst them comes and says, I did not spare so and so until I sowed the seeds of discord between a husband and wife. The Satan goes near him and says, you have done well. Amash said, he then embraces him. Shaitan's throne was overturned so that it hung downwards and he fell off of it. The angels then caught hold of him and imprisoned him for 40 days in the 40 seas. Finally, he contrived his escape and he came up to the Mount Abu Qubais and let out a mighty scream. Hearing him yell, all the devils in Ifrit came flying and gathered around asking him, what is it with you that you scream so loud? Iblis answered them, such a terrible destroyer has been sent down upon you as you have never known or seen before. What is more against this plague? There is no remedy. The devils were all shocked and asked, Who is it? Shaitan replied, It is the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, mighty and glorious, the son of Abdullah, son of Abdul Muttalib, who is born in Mecca tonight. He has the power to demolish all idols and defeat all unbelief in the whole world. He will bring the light of Islam and spread the faith from east to west. No place will remain on earth where the call of unity has not been heard and the unbelievers will be smitten 
and abased. No trick and no deception will prevail against his influence. The scripture he will bring will watch over his nation, and his religion and law will remain valid and in place until the day of judgment. His followers being assured of the Lord's forgiveness and grace. So he said and let out another terrible scream. Some scholars mention that another sign which accompanied the birth of the prophet was the devils were stricken with falling stars and were blocked from hearing any of the news exchanged by the angels in the sky. Among the signs is that Iblis, the forefather of the devils, was blocked from the news of the sky, so he rang out a very loud scream. Likewise, he rang out when he was damned, when he was taken out of paradise, and when the chapter of the Fatiha was revealed, Anas bin Malik, may Allah be well pleased with him, that the Holy Prophet, upon him blessings and peace, said, The first to be dressed with a garment of fire will be Iblis. He shall place it on his brow and drag it behind him. So will his progeny after him, and he will be crying out, O oh my self, destruction and they will be calling out oh our self destruction and so on until they stop over hellfire saying oh our self destruction then it will be said to them call not that day for one destruction but call for many destructions ibn an'am said while prophet musa alayhi salam was in a gathering Iblis came wearing a hooded cape that changed in colors. When the devil came nearer, he took off the cape and set it down and came to Musa saying, Peace be upon you. Musa replied, Who are you? He said, I am Iblis. Musa responded, No greetings from Allah to you. What brought you here? The devil said, I came to greet you because of your high godly status. Musa said, What have I seen you wearing? Iblis replied, I use it, the cape, to capture the hearts of the sons of Adam. Musa asked, What is it that if a human does will enable you to take him over? He replied, If he becomes fond of himself and considered his good deeds plentiful, I warn you from three things. First, never be alone with a woman that is not lawful to you, because whenever someone does so, I personally accompany him and use her to seduce him. Second, never promise Allah something except that you fulfill your promise. Whenever someone promises Allah something, I personally accompany him to prevent him from fulfilling his promise. And never take an amount of money to give charity except that you make sure you give it to that charity. Whenever someone takes an amount of money to give to charity, I personally accompany him to persuade him not to give it. Then Iblis walked away saying, Woe to me, thrice I have taught Prophet Musa from what to warn the sons of Adam. Surah Al-Fatiha is the greatest chapter of the Quran. It is a light that was granted to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam which had not been granted to any other prophet or messenger before him. Indeed, some of the Salafis stated that when this chapter was revealed, Shaitan let out a great cry of lament because it holds a central position in the daily prayer. The underlying theme of Al-Fatiha is one of the contemplation and serenity, pondering the names and attributes of Allah, pondering the creation, and acknowledging that he alone deserves praise and worship, that he alone should be asked for help, that he alone should be feared and hoped, and that he alone should be invoked, that there is indeed a day of judgment, and that guidance has come to us, and we are required to follow it. It calls us to carefully scrutinize our relationship with our Lord. Are we living according to the dictates of none has the right to be worshipped, save of Allah or not. This opening chapter, despite its brevity, calls man to fulfill the rights of Tawheed, the right that Allah has over us to worship Him alone without any partners, 
in 30 places. This chapter summarizes succinctly the message of the whole Quran.